say you this. ain't sovereign, bro. I'm gonna say the real you know why? Because real we're real in thing. captivity. Give me that in Baruch. Right. I'm gonna say the real Give me that in Baruch. What we fail to realize is that the Israelites who call themselves Moors today, that's not your nationality. It just means black. But you're so smart in your studies, you can't get past the damn definition because you don't research. Hey, bro, so you say you a Moor, right? Nationality being a Moor. What would you say your nationality is? Yeah. Rastafari. What would you say your nationality is? Black. Now, hey, bro, I want to I want to show you something. Don't y'all all look alike, right? Would y'all would y'all say that y'all brothers? Would y'all would y'all look at each other and say, that's my brother? Y'all brothers, right? But how come your nationality is Moor, his nationality is Rastafarian, and his nationality is black? Those are not that, but that doesn't establish nationality, though. Let me ask you, brother. What's your name right here? What's your name? What's your name? Yeah. Marvel. Marvel. What does the word more mean? What does the word itself mean? More. No, that's not what the word more means. The word more, M-O-O-R. What does that mean? What is the definition of the word more? Not me. I'm just saying the old. The, the definition of the word. No. So. Yeah, the straw man. The straw man. I know all about the straw. I know all about the straw man. The UCC becoming sovereign. I understand all of that. I did all of that. But don't go nowhere, Rastafarian and black. I want to show you something. We're dealing with more. So when you deal with the word more, where does the word more come from? It's not. It's a Latin word. The word more is Latin. So what does it mean in Latin? That, that doesn't explain what a moor is. I don't need to know the seven acts of first, the first, but before, so watch this. Before I know the seven acts of a moor, I need to know what a moor is, right? Like how about, why would I even want to be a moor or know what the Moors deal with if I don't know what a Moor is. So when you look up the definition of Moor, a Moor, Moor is a Latin word. It means black. That's all it means. Because you said you trace your nationality back. Let me ask you this. Who ruled, who ruled the Byzantine Empire? Do you know? Who, who ruled the Byzantine Empire? They were Christian Moors. They were Christian blacks. Moor is a Latin word. It only means black. So when you say you're a Moor, ain't no difference than this brother right here saying that I'm black. That's why we. That, that's why he say that. Because if in the Latin term, if you spoke Latin to say that you were black, you would say that you're Moor. Right. That's all it means. The word Moor is the is is the Latin definition for black. That's all it means. Now when you say you're Rastafarian, Rastaf black black is a color. So what color is your? Let me ask you this brother right here. What's the main color of his shirt? What's the main color of his shirt? What's the main, what, what, what color is my boots? But he said black ain't a color. What color is his shirt? It's black. So he say he's black. Now, you, I don't want to call you Rastafari anymore. You say your name is Mark. What's your name? Huh? Harry. Harry. My boots are black. Is he black? Look at him. Is he black? No. He's brown 
His skin is brown. He's brown. So there's a difference. There, co co black is a color. It's the color of my boots. It's the color of my pants. It's the color of his shirt. Right. Black in Latin is more. Right. Technically, you're saying the same thing. You're saying, I'm a more. You're saying you're black. He's saying, I'm black. He's saying he's a more. These are not nationalities. Your nationality is where your bloodline traces to. What is the blood? Where does that go to? The blood in your body, where did it come from? I know all about roof, the more bikes. I know I know exactly where you're going. You know why? Because I was involved in those same studies. That's why I asked you about the UCC and being sovereign, because Moors think they're sovereign. But you can go out here right now, you can go out here right now and, and, and get pulled over by the police without a driver's license, and they're going to write you a ticket. You know why? Because you're not sovereign. At the end of the day, I, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you ask me something. When you give me the definition of the word "more," see th this. This is how are we. Oh, so he's born sovereign too. Are you born? He's born. Hold on. I'm, uh, let's, somebody give me the definition of the word "sovereign." Give me the. Give me the word. See, Moors like to use these big old words. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. Give me the definition of the word "more." I'm gonna show you how deep we've, how, how much we've lost who we are as a people. Now we run with information that is created by the so-called white man that make us think we deep. Come and read the definition, officer. Sovereign. Read that, that's right. No, I want you to listen. Sovereign, a supreme ruler, especially a monarch. Sovereign means someone that is a supreme ruler. Are you a supreme ruler? Are you a supreme ruler? All right, I want you to go jump on this bus right here, Supreme Ruler, and ride off. Can you do that? You're a Supreme Ruler. You going where? I thought you was a Supreme Ruler, though. Supreme Rulers don't work. Supreme Rulers don't work, according to this brother. He said he born sovereign. I bet you he got a job, though. I bet you he got a job. I bet you he got to pay a light bill. He got to pay rent or mortgage. You gotta buy the clothes and shoes that you got on. You ain't sovereign, bro. You know why? Because we're in captivity. Give me that in Baruch. Give me that in Baruch. What we fail to realize is that the Israelites who call themselves Moors today, that's not your nationality. It just means black. But you're so smart in your studies, you can't get past the damn definition because you don't research. We are in captivity. The people that ruled the Byzantine Empire who called themselves Moors, they were Christian Moors. They were Israelite Moors. They were Muslim Moors. They all understood that their true nationality was to be an Israelite. Read what you got. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. That's why you got to go to work. You ain't sovereign because you ain't captivity. You got to go to work so you can pay a damn bill. How are you a supreme ruler? You see that? He want to talk to you now because he can't make no sense of the bull crap that he claimed that he is. You are not a Moor. That is not a Moor. These are the Christians right here. You see these brothers right here in these purple shirts that are following Christ, that are keeping his commandments? We are the true Christians. Acts chapter 11, verse 26. Watch this, word. Watch this right here. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assumed themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christian first in Antioch. We are the disciples of God. You understand that, brother? Brother that called himself black. You say you black. Look at this sign right here. Come look at this. Can you read? I'm sure you can read, right? Come and look at this sign right here. And tell me if you black. You're not black because the pops that you, your shoes black. Your shoes black, so how you black? The problem with our people is that we so bugged out. Hey, brother, you see how he want to talk to you now? He done got cut so bad, he want to talk to somebody to explain his point. Let me explain to you what it is, because you don't say, I can't talk to that brother right there, because he know too damn much, and he using the Bible, and he got a microphone. So I'm going to explain it to you. You is a creek, and you a more. You a more, brother. You ain't no more. You not a more. Yeah. Uh, what are you saying? Allah teach you? What is Allah? Arm, leg, leg, arm, head? No. What, who is Allah? Who is Allah? Who? Okay, all right, I'm going to let you talk because you got the knowledge. Let me, see, let me hear what you got to say. What? Who taught Noble Juwali? Who taught Noble Juwali? 
I bet you you can't. I bet you hundred dollars you can't answer that question. Who taught Noble Drew Ali? I know you don't because you don't. Hey, you know what? I, you know what I love. You know what I love about brothers like you that have that have studied that that way of life is that I've done it too for twenty years, and I know you can't answer that. The man that taught Noble Drew Ali was Wallace Farr Muhammad. He also taught Elijah Muhammad, and he also taught uh uh uh, uh Noble Drew Noble Drew Ali. He also taught Prince Hall. Wallace Farr Muhammad taught all of you black men that dumb doctrine that you're running with, talking about I'm sovereign. How you sovereign and you about to go get on a bus? What the hell? You sovereign, but you about to go jump on a bus. You so sovereign, won't you create the bus? A matter of fact, won't you get on the bus and just drive off? Because you sovereign. You are a supreme ruler. What the hell is a supreme ruler doing walking around Columbia, South Carolina? A supreme ruler is walking in Columbia, South Carolina. You look like a supreme ruler, all right. You are a supreme ruler. Now, the Israelites ain't supreme in nothing today because we broke the commandments of God. Read that in Baruch again. Read that in Baruch again. The, you got out the halfway house, but you supreme ruler, though. What you doing? You, what are you doing in the halfway house, supreme ruler? What are you doing in a halfway house? You are supreme ruler. You sovereign. Why don't you own the damn uh, uh, halfway house? Brother, you a joke. You a joke. Hey, it's men like you that are the problem for the black community. It's men like you that are the reason that our communities are suffering under the information that's been propagated to them through our time here in this country. Men like you. Read what you got. Baruch chapter 3 verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. We are yet this day in captivity. That's why Supreme Ruler Moore is walking the streets. Because we're in captivity. He can't understand that he's a slave in America, but he, he, he in his mind, he's sovereign. But how you sovereign? Your feet hurt from walking all damn day. How you sovereign when you just walked out of the halfway house 10 minutes ago? You are in captivity, brother. And you are going to poison brothers that listen to the doctrine that you learned from Noble Drew Ali that he learned from Wallace Farr Muhammad. What y'all brothers got to realize is that we are slaves today. What? The Israelites here in America or the black, Hispanic, and Native American, Native American man that's here in America today, we are the slaves that the Bible spoke of that will come into captivity. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. chapter 28 verse 68 it is a shame for black men to have taken on the information that they've taken on and they run with and you know what it's brothers like that standing on the corner they would rather hear that than the words of god oh he on the he on the phone with, the, with his other supreme god right now he on the he on the phone with allah he telling them to come and surround us bro you a you a joke we ain't worried about nobody surrounding us you know why because we got the angels of the most high God surrounding us. That's right. There's nothing you can do to us. Because the angels of the most high God, they are right here with us. It ain't nothing you can do. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Yeah. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. You see that? Hey, bro with the dreads. You know why he talking to you? You know why he talking to you? Because he can fool you. He can trick you with the information coming out of his vile mouth. He can confuse you with the information coming out of his vile mouth, but he can't fool these men up here to actually study the Bible. That's he right. can't fool these men to actually know what's going on in society right now. So he'd rather deal with those that are of a base knowledge. That's why he's dealing with you. Because the people that are in captivity today are the same people that came into captivity during 1619, 1492. Some of them came here and they understood. Yeah, they might have called themselves Moors, but they understood that they were Israelites. Read that again. 
and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ship. If the brother really understood his history about being Moors, he would know that the men that ruled the Byzantine Empire, they called themselves Moors, they were conquered by their own enemy today, the so-called white man. Right. They were conquered in the Byzant during the Byzantine Empire, they during the Roman Empire, where they ruled for over a thousand years, and right. they came into captivity because they trusted their enemy. Right. Now the enemy tell them, hey, you know, you're really a Moor, and you're sovereign. Well, why the hell you at the bus stop then? Bring it up. sovereign. If you're a supreme ruler, why the hell you standing out here at the bus stop with the rest of these brothers that's waiting on the bus? That's right. Because you in captivity, bro. That's why. Because you in captivity. I can't hear you. Well, you might not get on the bus, but you still standing out here. A supreme ruler, you should be you should be conquering nations, bro. You should be con you know what I'm doing? I'm teaching my people. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing what you ain't doing. I'm teaching my people. That's why we are here. That's why we are here. I bet you can't prove it though. You can't prove that it's false. This truth right here, they've been saying that this truth has been false for hundreds of years. But it's proving itself to be true. You know why? Because we got men that are raising up, changing their lives, changing their families, and coming back to serving the Most High God. Give me that in, in, the, in Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 5. Because don't think because you spew rhetoric that we get we scared of something. We was once niggas just like you. The only difference is God raised us up and called us to be men, pillars in our community. What are you going to do? What are you going? When are you going to decide to get your black behind off the corner, pull your pants up, and be a man for your country? Right. Be a man for your people. Right. When are you going to do that? Right. Read. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee the sea. Holy Bear, spirit of, of discipline, bed flees you. You think you were more. You ain't, the spirit ain't no spirit dealing with you. Read on. And remove from thoughts that are without understanding. And will not abide when unrighteousness come in. Read. For wisdom is a loving spirit, and will not acquit a blasphemer of his words. For God is a witness of his ways, and a true beholder of his heart, and a hearer of his tongue. Hey, how you doing, brother? How you doing, brother? Let me ask you this. What's your nationality? What's it? You see that? Hey, listen. Let me ask you something. You see, the, you see these brothers over here? They're your brothers, right? Now, that you, I, I can agree with that to an extent. I can, I, can, I can agree with that to an extent. But technically, yeah, we're going to the following one. Look at this right here. He said, don't listen to them. Don't believe them. I got a question. Did this happen to your people? That happened to your people, right? Did it happen to their people? Yeah. So technically, we're the same people, right? Technically, we're the same people. But what separates us is information. Right. Information separates us. Some of us are able to take information and elevate to a higher level. Some of us, we don't want no information. We we'll, we'll rather stay comfortable in the position that we're in. I got a question. Will this, how do we fix this? Or is this already fixed? Are we free? We're not free, right? Go back to Peru. Are we free? Did this happen to your people? Huh? So, has this changed? Does this still happen today? This still happens today. So, our job is to come to our people in the ghettos, in the hoods, and to teach them who they are according to the Bible. That's our job. What's his job? He don't want a job. But we got to realize when we read the scriptures that the most our God is calling men. He ain't calling boys that want to sit around in captivity in the place that they were slaves at and stay in the same condition. Right. We say we won't change. But when do we get up off our behind and start doing something to affect change? So I said, brother, what's your nationality? What would you say? What would you say? You would say black. So on this sign it says American blacks. In the Bible, is there a word called American blacks? No. In the Bible, American blacks is Judah. So your true nationality is to be an Israelite. You are an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. That's who you are. You're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Bro, we're done talking to you because you're sovereign. I got a question, brother. You know what the word sovereign means? Sovereign means supreme ruler, power. Do you have supreme, are you are you a supreme ruler? You a supreme ruler? Did, did you just get off the bus? 
So are you a supreme ruler? Yeah. You're not a supreme ruler. Are you a supreme ruler now? No. Why? Because this happened to us. This happened to us. You're not a supreme ruler if somebody else gonna put you in captivity. So now, exactly, we're all over in America. Right now, we're still in captivity. How? Because we gotta pay bills. We don't own lands. We don't, we, we, we don't rule societies. A supreme ruler rules societies. He controls and set things up for his people. Are we doing that as a people today? Why? The question, the, the answer is because we're not in the we're not in the same position that God originally put us in. Now, when God chose us and placed us on the earth, guess what we were? Supreme rulers. Give me Psalms 82. We were supreme rulers in our godlike state. But something happened. This. Why did this happen though? I'm, you want to know why? I'm gonna show you why. Hold that. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. The answers are in the Bible. The problem is our pastors have not told us what's in the Bible. Right. They've given us a shuck in a job, a quick song, uh, pastor collection played around, gone. Everybody going back home. Nobody know nothing. The answers is right here. Read what you got, 28, 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments, and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. Who else did that happen to? Name another people on the earth that this has happened to. Can you name another people on earth that this has happened to? At the magnitude that this happened to our people. Nobody else, right? So that would mean the curses that were written in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15, hold that Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 1. The curses that was written in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15, they were specific for a specific group of people. That wasn't if this didn't happen to the whole to the whole world, that means that the curses were only given to be put on a specific group of people. Let's find out who these people were. And guess what? They were not Moors. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. These be the words which Moses speak unto all Israel. Who is Israel? Do y'all know when you read the Bible, who's Israel? Remember, if you don't know the story, I'm going to explain it to you. Remember, Jacob wrestled with an angel. Remember that? Jacob was wrestling with an angel. He said, I ain't going to let you go until you bless me. And what did he do? What was his blessing? He changed his name from Jacob to Israel. So now the Bible is talking to the children of Israel who are the children of Jacob. Now Jacob had 12 sons. Jacob, you see that? Black, black men that don't that, that, that are against God, they always want to teach when they don't set up a platform. Brother, if you want to teach, take your behind down the corner down there if you want to teach somebody. So look, because you want to teach, you're jealous because nobody's listening to your marriage doctrine. So Jacob had 12 sons. These are the sons of Jacob. You just said that your nationality is American black. Well, Ju Judah is the American blacks. How do we know that? That's written in the Bible too. That's written there too. That ain't written there? Okay, give me Genesis chapter. I'm gonna show you what our pastors have not shown us because the spirit of the Lord ain't dealing with him. Just like they ain't dealing with the Moorish brother. Give me Genesis chapter uh, 49 and verse eight. Let's see. Let's see if it's written in the Bible. He say, the Bible don't say that the American blacks is Judah. Let's find out. This God talk. If the spirit dealing with you, you gonna understand how God talks. This, this God talk. This, you believe the Bible? Okay, let's see. The book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Now, let's listen carefully. It says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. If it's talking to Judah, who's his brethren? His brethren is Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, and the rest of the 12 tribes on down. Remember, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Israel had 12 sons. They became known as the children of Israel. Now, the Bible says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren, the rest of the 12 sons, shall praise. Read on. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemy. Read it again. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemy. The prophecy is, 
Thy hand of Judah shall be in the neck of his enemies. Come here. If me and you were enemies, and my hand is in the neck of my enemy, what are we doing? What are we doing? We're fighting. That means that Judah and his enemy are going to be in real close proximity of each other, right? Okay. Follow me now. Read on. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. It says Judah is a lion's whelp. What's a lion's whelp? That's a young lion. That's a young, that's a lion that's that's, that's young. He's hungry. He's ready to attack. That's what, that's what a young whelp is. Now, let's break this down. Judah is in the midst of his enemies. We just said that the American blacks is Judah, correct? The American blacks is Judah. Who is the enemy of Judah in America? How has his, has his hand been in the neck of the white people since he got here? Yes. So now, during the early 50s, the early 60s, you had what? Black Panthers. You had the Brown Berets. You had all, you had, you had uh, the Nation of Islam. You had all these different groups, the Morris uh, uh, Science Temple Brothers. You had all these brothers trying to raise up and get Judah out of the captivity, out of the slavery, out of the bondage and oppression that they were in. Am I correct? What was the struggle? Yeah, but what? As as the Black Panthers was trying to raise up and get that that people out of op out of the oppression, what was happening? What happened to the Black Panthers? They got what? Read that again from the top. Judah is a lion's whip. Judah, thou art whom thy brother shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemy. Judah's hand was in the neck of his enemies since he came here on slave ships. Since this happened, when our people was brought from the uh, west from the west coast of Africa and brought to the Americas, our hands began that began us being in our hands being in the neck of our enemies. When we were trying, when they brought us to plantations, what happened, brother? When we was on slave plantations, what was natural for a slave to do? You get brought from from Africa to another country, what was natural for a slave to do? Run, hell, try to get the hell out of there. You see what I'm saying? So from the time we left West Coast of Africa and came into America, our hand has been in the neck of our enemy. That's God talk. It's a prophecy. It's telling you what's going to happen in the future terms without saying, Judah, you are the American blacks and you're going to be fighting with the white man over in America. This is how God is explaining the prophecy. The prophecy is being explained to us in a different term. So read it from the top again. Genesis chapter 49 verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemy. It says our hands will be in the neck of our enemies because we will be struggling. We will be fighting to overcome the oppression that our enemies have brought upon us. Read. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. They're going to bow down before us because, remember, the Black Panthers were the first, were some of the first black men that rose up. You had Martin Luther King, Denmark Vesey, Nat Turner. You had all these brothers trying to raise us up, but they kept killing our brothers. They kept shooting us down in the street, much like they continue to do today, right? So it says that the rest of the children, the rest of the sons, they're going to praise Judah. Why? Because it's the black man here in America that's raising up to teach our brothers and our sisters who we are in these last days. So Judah has been fighting with the enemy since he got here. He's trying to tell the rest of the 12 tribes, look, bro, you're an Israelite. You're not black. You're not uh, 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 African-American. You are an Israelite according to God. We're the sons of God. Read on. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art done up. It says from the prey, this lion has gone up. Because we had a fiery spirit during the early 60s. Would you agree? We had a fiery spirit during the early 50s. Martin Luther King had a fiery spirit. Denmark Vesey had a fiery spirit. Nat Turner had a fiery spirit. But what happened? They brought in white women, drugs, in our community gave us guns and we went from straight revolutionary men to straight niggas killing each other. Now we're sitting at the bottom of, uh, of society wondering why we're here. Thinking we're some damn moors. Thinking we are, are, are five percenters and nations of gods and earth. Have no sense of knowledge of who we are and don't want to hear what God says. We got to come back to the understanding that look, you're a son of the most high God. You're an Israelite. That's your true nationality. The, your bloodline traces back to Jesus Christ and the Most High God Himself. What is the nation?
nation is men leading by example. 